All right, then without any further delay, we are going to begin with our webinar. Firstly, let me tell you about the contents of today's webinar session. Firstly, I'll be introducing you to Midas software company. And uh, then further, we will be looking at Midas GTS NX, a product overview. Then we'll have a small discussion on slope stability analysis, SRM method more specifically. And we will be further looking at the demonstration on uh, SRM method of slope stability analysis in Midas GTS NX. After we're done with the demonstration, we will be concluding our session and further we'll have the question answer session. Now let me start with a brief product overview. Not product overview as such the company overview. So Midas was established in the year 1989. And uh, since then, it, uh, we have uh, distributed the software solutions in more than 120 number of countries. There are 540 number of employees, more than 18,000 number of clients, and more than 60,000 number of users worldwide. Midas has its main branch in South Korea, headquarters in South Korea. And all over the world, there are nine branches. One in China, USA, India, Japan, UK, Russia, Singapore, Philippines, and lately there is a new branch office in Dubai, that is UAE. Midas has uh, two main business area. One is in engineering consultancy and the other is software developments. Engineering consultancy includes bridges and civil structures, buildings and plant structures, geotechnical analysis and mechanical analysis and depending on these consultancy requirements the softwares have been developed so we have softwares in the field of bridge engineering buildings geotechnical and mechanical engineering because of the uh, these two business areas the softwares which have been developed are taken care to have practical user interface and optimal design solutions. Because of this reason, let us take a look at the partial list of worldwide users. You can see over here major companies. This is just a small list of major companies as well. You might be knowing some of them or maybe all of them. Now let's move ahead to Midas family programs. So what do Midas offer? Midas is known to be the biggest CA software developer in the field of civil engineering. This is because it has family programs, four main branches. One is in bridges, structures, geotechnical and mechanical. So in the bridges, there is Midas Civil Software Solution, which is an integrated solution system for bridges and civil structures. You can analyze and design simple slab bridges, box culverts to complicated extra dose bridges, cable state bridges, suspension bridges. So it's, it's all done in a very short period of time. It saves a lot of time in modeling and it helps you create more research options using Midas Civil. Further, there is Midas FEA, which is again research-oriented software solution, which has advanced non-linear and detailed analysis system. Under the structures, there is Midas Gen, which is integrated system for buildings and general structures. You can analyze and design all types of RC and steel structures. And also you can uh, get good reports generated out of them. Then further, Midas D Shop is there. Midas D Shop is an auto drafting and reward detailing module, which can also generate bill of materials. So basically, when we we are done with the design in Midas Gen, it can be imported to Midas D Shop, which can create the drawings and generate the bill of materials. There is Midas Design Plus, which is a structural component design and detailing tool. The analysis results from Gen can be taken to Design Plus 
to perform the design and create the drawings and also generate bill of material. Coming to the geotechnical family program, we have GTS NX, which is our main topic today. With GTS NX is a 3D finite element geotechnical analysis system. We will look at its capabilities in further slides. Then further, we have the soil work software solution, which is a 2D finite element as well as analytical geotechnical solution for practical design. It's a really good software solution when it comes to 2D analysis. All right, uh, further in the mechanical family programs, there is Midas NFX and Midas FX Plus. Midas NFX can also be used in the field of civil engineering when it comes to impact analysis as well as CFD analysis. In Midas NFX, we can perform 3D CFD analysis, which can actually simulate the wind tunnel test results. Then there is Midas FX Plus, which is a pre-processor for finite element analysis any complicated geometry can be easily modeled using Midas FX Plus and further imported into the other software solutions like NFX, Civil, FEA, Gen, GTS, SolidWorks. All right, let's go ahead now to understand Midas GTS NX. So I'll give a brief product overview of Midas GTS NX. What is GTS NX? Firstly, GTS stands for Geotechnical Analysis System, while the NX denotes that there is new experience in it. And this is the key phrase here. The software has been fully optimized for 64-bit platform, which greatly increases its capabilities. And it is equipped with specialized and unique features and has been developed to expedite the modeling and analysis process. With all these features, you will be able to generate high optimal quality designs with ease and efficiency that you never imagined. By making good use of this software, like the 64-bit platform software, it will greatly improve the analysis speed and your capabilities. And of course, uh, the more powerful pre and post processors are, the more significant improvement be done for the user interface. And that will help to suit your needs be in a better way. All right, so here we go. Uh, these are the geotechnical analysis options that are available in GTS NX. Let me firstly uh, tell you that uh, there is actually a huge problem with many geotechnical uh, in, uh, in that many geotechnical engineers face when it comes to software solutions, and that is the use of multiple geotechnical programs that you need to learn. And uh, because of that, you need to know the different un unique interfaces and features of each one of them. So if even if uh, you know it, then you have to like go on modeling the same model in different programs. For example, uh, you would like to have a dam and levy project, which, uh, which would require seepage analysis, settlement, slope stability and seismic analysis. So all these analysis are required on this one particular project. The same thing can also be uh, applied for foundation and retaining wall projects, which require soil structure interaction as well as stress deformation analysis. And most geotechnical programs can perform only one type of analysis out of these. So this actually uh, makes it tedious for us to keep on modeling the same model in all the programs in different different programs all right however however if you're going to be using GTS NX you no longer have to rely on several different geotechnical programs instead you will be able to use GTS NX to perform any type of geotechnical analysis and it can perform linear nonlinear analysis 
it can perform seepage slope coupled analysis consolidation analysis then there is transient seepage steady seepage analysis that can be performed uh, then further there is dynamic analysis such as uh, response spectrum or time history analysis and it can be coupled with slope stability analysis which which is like srm method uh, in which srm method can be used and you can also go for construction stage analysis which is mostly used for excavations like stage excavation then you can also have single and group pile interaction and also there is a complex tunnel analysis that can be performed in either 2d or 3d and actually in gts annex you can have 2d as well as 3d models analyzed all right and your efficiency actually will be greatly increased by the ability to run multiple analysis types on a single model file so in gts annex you can actually have one single model file uh, which can be used to perform all of these analysis like all the types of analysis that you actually require for your project so your time is actually saved in modeling and understanding uh, one model in different uh, like basically you do not have to do uh, the modeling of one project again and again once it's done in one gts annex program you do not need to worry at all just go on and do your research without worrying about anything else so another important part about gts is that you can simulate the ground behavior as close to real world as possible Coming to the graphic user interface of the program, uh, similar to all our Midas software solutions and last time we had seen about Midas structural software solution, there is ribbon menu at the top and it has been organized to streamline the modeling workflow. There are analogous functions grouped together and there is right click content as well. Uh, that can be optimized and uh, it can be useful to load and apply the boundary conditions so all these functions will be at the tip of your fingers then there are image tool tips that can help you understand the features easily and uh, with the aid of the guiding figures uh, even a first-time user like if you are going to be using a for the first time, you can easily understand the different functions and options and how to use them. Then there is another very significant ability in Midas GTS NX and that is to open different models in a single window. So these two models are different ones as you can see over here and they can be opened in a single window. So that helps us to seamlessly work on all of these simultaneously moving on to the practical work process we can actually import CAD entities easily and create a realistic 3d geometry then we can model our structures using CAD features apply load and boundary conditions analyze the model and obtain the results the general geotechnical workflow stays the same but with gts annex we can do this in in several simple steps right so gts annex actually brings numerous options to help us increase our capabilities and efficiencies for example in gts annex we have the auto connect feature all right so in the on in the auto connect function we can automatically show the shared we can see the shared faces uh, for the solids that we have selected and then we simply click OK and define uh, those faces and then uh, there will be basically a proper nodal connectivity maintained by the program automatically after we perform the mesh for each of the solids so that's one important part then talking about the hybrid mesh generation as in the hexahedron centered auto mesh generation which can guarantee 
very stable uh, stress and strain results at the, at the face of the elements. Also, we can define analysis conditions like boundaries and loads automatically and run the analysis with high performance 64 bit solver. And we can make use of the unique and powerful post processor to extract the results. So we have got basically results in the form of contours, in the form of tables. There are probe results that can actually show or uh, put a sticker on your uh, model wherever the results are to be displayed. Next, I would like to mention about the capability or uh, basically the compatibility of the program with other software products. If there are projects drawn on CAD software, then you may find a need to redraw the entire project in analysis software when it comes to the point of modeling and analyzing. However, in GTSNX, you just have to import the CAD file and then directly start using the Midas GTS program. So this feature basically eliminates the need to recreate existing drawings in the program and thus it saves your considerable amount of time and effort. Once your geometry is imported, there are a variety of different tools to fix the geometry shapes. For example, wherever we have gaps between edges uh, that should be connected, GTSNX will remove these small surfaces and make the connections. So this makes the model, the modeling feature a very free process. GTSNX is also compatible with Midas Gen program. So when it comes to soil structure interaction, uh, where we can directly import our structure into Midas GTSNX and perform the soil structure analysis, direct soil soil structure analysis. Similarly, we can take the bridges from Midas Civil into GTSNX to perform the soil structure interaction. There is interaction between our 2D soft soil work software, that is 2D geotechnical software and 3D geotechnical software solution. All right. So this is how there is compatibility between the other MIDA software solutions and also CAD. All right. Now I'd like to tell about a special feature of the program and that is about the terrain and soil strata generation. All right, that's a very important uh, requirement when it comes to a geotechnical, 3D geotechnical analysis. Typically, there are idealizations made because of less time. This in turn leads to decrease in the accuracy of the final analysis in any software solution. GTSNX features a high-end terrain geometry maker, we call it as TGM, that automatically converts the topographic maps into an editable surfaces. It is also equipped with a bedding plane wizard that enables us to model uneven soil strata with ease. We can directly utilize our soil profile by entering the boring log data for different locations with this type of dialog box and then the program will automatically extrapolate the changes in the soil levels between each points to allow us to generate the soil layers. Now let me play you a short video in which we will demonstrate the terrain geometry maker. Terrain geometry maker can easily generate the ground surface. Here we can create highly irregular 3D surface representing actual ground topography by directly importing a topographic map as shown over here. 
We can specify the area of interest and the number of sampling points to control the degree of precision and the software will generate the ground surface for us. We can then save the surface and import it as we did right now. And then we can define a solid by generating a large box. And then we can simply cut this large box from the surface that has been created. And here we go. We got the terrain generated quickly, making our model very accurate. Finally, I would like to show you some projects in which GTSNX could be applied with great benefits. For example, in the project like Dubai Tower, that is Burj Khalifa, which approximately is 80 storied high rise tower, or there is Palazzo Versace Tower and the D1 Tower in UAE, GTSNX was powerful, uh, has powerful capabilities and uh, was a, a great benefit for such projects. In these projects, a full 3D finite element modeling was needed and in, uh, that, that helped us to understand the behavior of the structure and the ground together. And it's very important for such an important high-rise structure. GTSNX would also help with its flexibility and capability to cover many complex analysis aspects in a single model file. There are other cases in which GTSNX was of great benefit and that's like the King Cross Station, London, UK or Odeon Tower in Monaco. In such projects, careful analysis of the effect of new construction on existing adjacent buildings was needed to be performed and was done very easily using MIDAS GTSNX because it would allow the assessment of the new structure as well as the interaction with the surrounding structures. Overall, GTSNX can perform all types of geotechnical analysis in order to cater for the requirements of any project. Moving on to the topic, to the main topic of discussion, that is soil uh, slope stability analysis. I would like to start with the definition of slope stability. What is slope stability? Slope, it is uh, the potential of soil covered slopes to withstand and undergo movement. And stability is determined by the balance of shear stress and shear strength. The field of slope stability encompasses static and dynamic stability of slope of earth and rock fill dams, slopes of other types of embankments, excavated slopes and natural slopes in soil and soft rock. And because of the sudden and catastrophic failure of slopes, there can be injury or loss of life and it also disrupts the roads and rails above it. So basically, the potential of soil covered slopes to withstand underground underground movement withstand undergo movement then dams embankments excavated natural slopes require the soil stability and uh, there is uh, if we are not looking at the soil stability then there could be the injury or loss of life and infrastructural damage why we need slope stability analysis Typically, it is used to analyze the safety of natural and man-made slopes. So, the main design objectives of slope stability analysis include the following. To find the endangered areas. So, where the areas, uh, the areas like may be compromised or endangered due to the possible failure of slope. Then there is investigation of potential failure mechanism. So we would like to actually predict how the failure slopes would be and what is causing it to fail. Design of optimal slopes with regard to safety, reliability and economics. So sometimes uh, there is like man-made slopes that we want to design. They are supposed to be like safe and reliable and also they need to be cost effective. 
design of remedial measures like barriers, stabilizations, etc. So sometimes when uh, slopes are not stable enough on their own, then engineers would design specific structural supports that will keep that slope stable in such a condition. I would also like to explain about this image we have here. Uh, this is a sort of the way the slope typically tends to fail and uh, we call it as a failure surface. And uh, this has a sort of rotational type of movement where the slope will start to slide down the embankment here. Here are some of the design applications of slope stability analysis. One is road cuts. Typically when road is being made or constructed, sometimes slopes need to be constructed at the sides to make room for them. So engineers have to check if these slopes are stable enough to stand on their own. But when these slopes are steeper, then certain man-made reinforcements are required to be included. This is an image of uh, Mumbai Pune Expressway where the, the reinforcements has been or uh, has been implemented so in these uh, so in such kind of road cuts the engineers uh, they leave the space so basically in in such locations they have actually stopped one of the lanes which is closer to the uh, slope and uh, this is so that if there is any failure at all then it will firstly go into this area and then to the road so that the people like the traffic they would get enough uh, warning of the failure and then save themselves so that's about the that's the importance of slope stability then uh, coming to, to another ex uh, application is when there are deep excavations so whenever uh, there are excavations done for deep foundations there is slope stability concern so basically until the foundations are done the stability of soil has to be maintained and designed with the help of back uh, like tie backs uh, reinforcements in the soil to support them sometime we can make steps for such uh, big excavations so that the soil can stand on its own. Last but not the least, when it comes to landfills like open pit mines converted into landfills or large openings that are filled with debris or waste, the engineers have to check for the stability of the surrounding soil. And this is to ensure that there is no failure of slope as it would cause caving in, disrupting the use of the landfill. Slope stability analysis has the following methods. There is limit equilibrium method, which is an analytical solution. It is the oldest and the most well-known technique. It's also known as method of slices. In limit equilibrium method itself, there are different uh, methods available within. So firstly, there was Pelinius method developed and after that it was uh, improved with the help of Bishop's method and Yanbu method which took care of inter in interslice forces. Then uh, further uh, there was lateral forces also included in the uh, slices uh, basically to, uh, to get the equilibrium of slices, forces in the slices and that was done by Spencer's and Morganstone Price. So these are the most advanced LEM methods, Spencer and Morgenstern Price, and the older ones are the Bishops and the Yanbu methods. Pelinius, I guess, mostly they are not being, it's not being used. And uh, we are more familiar with the Bishops method from our uh, syllabus. Right, so that's about the LEM method. It is uh, mostly performed for 2D analysis. Then further, there is stress analysis method. Stress analysis method is like firstly LEM is done and then on that finite element analysis is performed. This is used to calculate the factor of safety for the failure surface assumed in the LEM. So firstly, just like I mentioned earlier, we need to get the LEM analysis and get the surface failure and then find out the factor of safety on it. And uh, 
The factor of safety and critical section is determined with the help of stress analysis method. The third method is the strength reduction method. It's the newest method which uses computer iterations. And we will discuss some more about SRM method, which will be used in the demonstration for the slope stability analysis in GTSNX today. In GTSNX, we can perform uh, both stress analysis method as well as strength reduction method. All right, let's understand some more about limit equilibrium method before we go ahead to SRM method. So what's, what's about this limit equilibrium method or what disadvantages or what all things are to be taken care of in the limit equilibrium method are mentioned right over here. So firstly, we cannot provide stress distribution and displacement with the limit equilibrium method. All right, it will just give us a factor of safety. Then uh, it, it is awkward to use for analyzing stability problems such as the failure of cantilever and retaining walls in which failure involves deformed wedges. So we don't get the wedge failure, we get uh, like basically the uh, failure surface directly as an arc or there are many methods more available when it comes to LEM. So it, it, it's like not useful when it comes to cantilever and retaining walls. Then further, we get unrealistic uh, stresses. However, they are not necessary. They are not. Th that does not mean that we'll get the factor of safety, uh, incorrect factor of safety, if we perform the LEM analysis. Then uh, in the LEM, one should not expect the computed stresses to necessarily represent the actual ground stresses. Sorry if they are spelling mistake then uh, LEM can become inadequate if the slope fails by complex mechanisms such as there is internal deformation or there is brittle fracture or progressive creep or liquefaction of weaker soil layers. So that is the reason why we are going to go ahead for more advanced analysis which is the SRM method and uh, let's look into the SRM method now. So we have the uh, these uh, theoretical principles written down for in front of you. Basically, strength reduction method utilizes the more column stress parameters like modulus of elasticity, Poisson's ratio, uh, cohesion, and so on. Then further, it involves successive reductions in shear strength of slope materials until failure occurs. So basically the shear strength of the slope is reduced, a lot of iterations performed and until the uh, solution is not converging or it is like saying that it, the solution cannot be converged, the program is going to keep on you know, finding out the factor of safety. So uh, that's, that's what we are having in the next point that failure is indicated when the finite element model does not converge to a solution because equilibrium cannot be maintained. All right, then the next point is regarding the critical load factor at which failure occurs is taken to be the factor of safety. So that's the last one which has converged. And then depending on the basis of the failure assumption for the failure strain, the shape of critical section varies and significant time is required for calculations by finite element analysis. So we need to understand that in SRM method, the uh, failure this the failure assumption uh, gives like the shape of a critical section and it, it like basically varies with uh, varies in from uh, different factors for different factor safeties and further uh, we can uh, we need to understand that it since it is an iterative process it will it'll take significant time Previously, we were doing LEM method because mostly LEM method, that is the limit equilibrium method, analytical method is more famous. Uh, why it's more famous? Because the SRM method, it was, uh, it was not used and these are the various reasons why it was not used before. So here it is. Firstly, there was lengthy modeling and computation and then result sign was like huge because it is a finite element modeling and analysis and iterative procedure. 
those times like in like in past there was there was no automated tool for performing the successive changes to shear strength and there were perceived hunger for material input data which were not collected in routine site investigations at least not with reasonable accuracy so basically uh, whatever site investigations were taking place were not giving us all the in, like the entire information required to perform the srm analysis now we do get them all right so next point why was that it is restriction to linear material strength more column model and unproven reliability of ssr results so uh, basically to uh, you know combine all these points there was no good site investigation there were no good software solutions so to perform the srm method but now that you have the analysis uh, solution the srm analysis solution that is gtsmx let us understand what are the analysis considerations required firstly we need to assume a single engs modulus and single poisson's ratio for the slope material and assign all material elastic perfectly plastic behavior then we need to use higher order elements for given number of nodes how the elements are generally more accurate because if there are less number of nodes then the rigidity will be higher and that will not give us the correct results all right so we need higher order elements which is possible in gts nx then uh, we need to begin with small number of elements then we can go ahead refine the model that is increase the number of elements and once we have obtained a good hands on a slope problem then we can uh, be very sure of the results obtained that gets us to the to the accuracy of the srm method then uh, check the sensitivity of results to number of elements this means that you need to understand not to you know make the mesh so fine that it will take really long results and will not make any um, major modification in the results that we have we can obtain if we reduce the number of elements that means increase the size of the mesh all right so we need to check the sensitivity of results to number of elements and also we need to take care that there is no coarse mesh so that uh, we don't get the wrong result then further we go ahead uh, uh, to understand one important note that the deformation parameters that is ings modulus poisson's ratio and dilatation angle they influence the magnitudes of computed deformations so you need to be very careful in putting the information all right now basically uh, this is all regarding what lem method was and srm method was let me quickly get you a brief comparison between srm and lem method all right so as compared to lem method srm method can more accurately simulate the behavior of support elements and it can more accurately simulate interactions caused by relative stiffness of slope materials srm method can indicate deformations at failure which lem method was not able to then uh, it srm method can eliminate the ar arbitrary assumptions regarding the inclinations and locations of interslice forces which is there which is seen in lem method we can automatically uh, also monitor the development of failure zones with the help of srm method Lastly, a certain method can be used to design the support elements in the slope. So, in short, we can see over here in the table. So, uh, what all things are required when it comes to LEM and SRM method for material properties? There is unit weight required for both cohesion, internal friction required. However, modulus, elasticity, Poisson's ratio, and draining conditions are required only for the SRM method. So, as you can see, how efficiently uh, the program is able to utilize the srm method and basically the srm method efficiently makes use of the modulus of elasticity poisson ratio ring condition as mentioned earlier to get us the more accurate results 
All right, so uh, let's also understand where we have to use the 3D modeling. Right, if the Z dimension of the problem is not large and it can be assumed that the state existing in the XY plane holds for all planes parallel to it, then one should consider the 3D modeling. All right, so basically, plane strain, wherever the plane strain condition is not met, you have to go for the 3D modeling, All right? And, um, and this is actually because 3D analysis can consider components which are neglected in the 2D analysis and it is possible to get more reliable results in 3D analysis. So in, in other words or in, in short, through 3D slope stability analysis, slope slip range can be considered, then location where slope activity is concentrated can be found and according to this location, solution plan can be established. That's about our theory regarding the slope stability analysis and specification, specifically the comparison between NEM and SRM method and also understanding why we need to go for 3D modeling. So now we are going to go ahead, say the demonstration on a 3D model using the SRM method in geotechnical software solution that is MIDAS, GTS, and X. So I'll be demonstrating over here a model as shown on your screen. Let me take you now to GTS NX. This is the geotechnical software solution offered by Midas. And uh, as you can see over here at the top, there is a ribbon menu, just like all Midas software solutions. It's very easy because we can firstly start with modeling the geometry, then apply the properties to it, then we can assign the boundary conditions and the loads using this tab, and further go ahead to perform the analysis and check the results. So we go from left to right completing the entire model and entire structural analysis and design, not structural, geotechnical analysis and design. Okay, so uh, we will start over here simply uh, with the user interface, which firstly I've introduced to the ribbon menu, then secondly we have the tree menu over here. Now in unlike uh, Gen over here, we have got three uh, tree menus. We have model tree menu that gives us information of the model. There is analysis menu, which gives us information only regarding the analysis, like the boundary conditions, loads, and the number of analysis cases. And the results tree menu, we will only see the results after the analysis has been performed. At the bottom, we can get to see the properties tree menu. So we select any particular element, and the property of that element will be displayed right over here. At the bottom, there is message window. It's like an output provided by the program and also if there is any error or warning, it can be displayed right over here. The program is capable of handling more than one project at a time in one single window. Like over here, I have got this 3D slope final which, which is performing the analysis at the same time. In the same window, I can show you the demonstration and also I have got over here the results displayed which I will be showing after the analysis has been performed or rather the modeling has been performed in the demonstration demonstration model. Alright, so let's go ahead. Okay, so firstly we are going to be going to the mesh tab and uh, I mean there is like different options that we have we can firstly create the geometry then do the uh, properties it's totally dependent on us so no need to worry about anything for example I can go to the geometry firstly and make face so here in the make face option I can go for this grid face all right basically I'm going to be creating a terrain uh, which can be created using uh, loading or rather Excel sheet table all right so I'm going to be inputting over here some values 
uh, for our terrain information. All right. So first of all, uh, this is about our grid, grid phase in number of uh, grids in the x direction. So providing 50 numbers for x and y direction both. And uh, further, the origin of my model in the x and y direction is going to be in the negative 10 meters and negative 10 meter distance. And the total length will be 270 in the x direction and 270 in the y direction. Now this is about the area of my grid. Now about the elevation of my you know, for explaining how the terrain is going to be because my terrain is undulating. Alright, I'm going to be loading over here. We can actually copy paste copy paste our um, no, uh, information like 50 numbers of grid lines are there. So 50, 15 to 50, so 100 nodes are there. So at those locations, what is the elevation of your uh, terrain is to be provided. So for now, I'm going to be loading the information that I already have. All right. I'll just click on apply over here. So this is one of the terrain or, or basically the strata elevation and I'll have another one that is going to be my terrain actually and I click on OK. Alright so basically we got the undulations for our strata and we have got undulations for our terrain and the program has made face out of the information the elevational information that I have provided to it. We can also make use of this terrain geometry maker which I showed in the presentation duration at the time of presentation. Alright, then uh, further we are going to be creating a solid box. So this was actually demonstrated in uh, the presentation however let's look in the actuality. So the origin point is going to be 0 and the width in the x by z is going to be 250 itself. So that was what our model going to be like, like as shown in the presentation, 250 by 250 meters. Alright, and uh, further, I'll just put it at 0 location and then click on OK. So we need to take care over here that the solid that we are creating is smaller than the faces that we have created so that they can get that they, they can actually cut this solid through through and through and that's what we're going to do next we're going to divide the solid with the help of these faces so this is the target object and then I select the faces all right and then I can call it as my ground and click on apply okay so because we have these options like delete original delete tool uh, the original solid will get deleted as well as those faces that we had earlier created those are uh, tools so those also will get deleted now we're going to be simply deleting this upper portion which is not required and thus get the terrain and the entire ground with the bedding planes all right so we have got the bedrock at the bottom and the weathering soil at the top so this is completed the program in this case has also taken care of uh, connecting the faces and uh, then when we are going to be creating the mesh, the mesh or the nodal connectivity will be taken care of by the program automatically. Alright, so the next part is going to be going to the mesh tab and defining the material property and uh, material definition and then the property definition. So that's important. Let's start with the material information. We are going to be using isotropic morcolum 
all right one good part about midas gtsnx or midas servers is that you need to provide the information of the material properties only that are associated with the type of analysis you're doing all right so you can simply select the more column type and then you can provide the modulus of elasticity so i'll provide the information right over here that's 23 and going to the porous type unit weight saturated is again 23 itself and initial word ratio is this also i'm going to be modifying the ko to be one that is the initial stress parameter and uh, also in the non-linear type the cohesion so this is like 100 Sorry, the cohesion for our bedrock is going to be 500. Let me write the name of the bedrock. Alright, and uh, further the friction angle, this one is 42 degrees, uh, degrees. And then I click on apply. We can go ahead with the next definition that is of the weathering soil. It's again more column and it is having modulus of elasticity of 1 e to the power 5 and the poison's ratio is 0.3 unit weight is 18 and uh, KO determination this is 0.5 and in the porous again unit weight is going to be 18 and in initial void ratio is 0.5 drainage parameter is drained we'll have a drained soil and uh, then there is non-linear information like the cohesion which is 100 yeah and the friction angle is 19 degrees so by clicking on ok we're done with the materials for the two layers of soil next is the property for our 3d solids that we have created one is for the bedrock and the second one will be for the weathering cell. Alright, we are done with the material. Now let's go ahead and mesh our entire geometry. With the help of this 3D mesh and uh, we have this auto solid 3D mesh tool. Alright, this is actually a very efficient function that is there in Midas GTSNX. We can simply select our solid geometry provide the solid size of the mesh then it is required for a hybrid mesh when it comes to SRM method in that as well yeah this is weathering soil we are going to be looking at some advanced options that are there in GTS and uh, that includes the hard order element option which gives us more accuracy and also I'll provide a mesh set name as weathering soil so that will be easy for me to utilize during my analysis case definition so after I click on apply the program is now going to create the mesh of the solid we can actually see how the mesh generation is going on and how much time it's going to take to perform the mesh won't take much time it's just an initial weight showing a little slowly but as you can see it has jumped to 50 percent and now 60 and we are done with the mesh now let's go ahead and mesh the bedrock so select the bedrock geometry solid geometry keeping the mesh size same we can also modify the mesh size that's not a problem everything is going to be same except the property will change to bedrock and i'll provide the mesh set name as bedrock and after that we can click on ok and the program is now going to mesh the lower geometry solid geometry into a bedrock mesh so we are done with the meshing and as you can see over here even though there is modify modification in the size or in the look uh, orientation of your mesh the connectivity the nodal connectivity of each mesh is maintained by the program and this is actually one of the most important uh, aspect that we need to keep in mind when we perform a 3D finite element analysis. 
So if there is no connectivity, you will not get the correct results. All right, so we're done with the meshing. Now let's go ahead with the static or slope analysis tab, which will get us the boundary conditions like the constraints. Now in GTS NX, we have this smart feature and that is called auto constraint feature. So usually when it comes to a large soil mass, we have to provide supports like uh, constraint in one, like in X direction on this plane and minus X direction on this plane, then Y direction on this plane and minus Y direction on the other plane. And at the bottom, we need to constrain for the Z and X and Y direction. So basically, or be only the Z direction. So basically, instead of manually providing all the constraints, we can use this auto constraint command, which will, I mean, locate the entire mesh and then simply click on OK and the program will automatically provide the support to all the faces. Okay, this constraint actually is required so that we simulate the continuity of our entire ground. All right. So uh, this is completed. Now next part is about the water level. Okay, so we can actually define the different water levels in GTS NX and use it for our analysis. In this we have options like there is change in water level uh, at different edges or we can also use faces. It's easy for me to use a face in such a condition where I want to fully saturate the soil. All right, the entire model. So when it comes to a rainy day, that time, of course, the entire ground is going to get saturated. So I'm going to be like using an interval of five for, uh, mod for the change in water level. And I will be activating my geometry right over here. Uh, and selecting the face, the upper face of the solid geometry and clicking on OK. So in this way, I have applied the water level. Now let me activate the mesh again and uncheck the geometry. I need the mesh itself. Next is loading the structure. Now you can apply different loads. You can apply static or dynamic loads on the structure. You can apply linear, non-linear loads on the structure. For now, in this demonstration, I'm going to be applying the self-weight only. All right, you can also apply water pressures and uh, other pressures, forces, moments, everything is possible. Even temperature loads are possible. All right, so here we go. So uh, for applying the self-weight to our structure, we can simply provide over here, uh, minus one as a scale factor for the uh, GZ location as in the GZ direction, global Z direction, that is what GZ stands for. And then further provide a load set name so that we understand what kind of load it is when we are creating the analysis case. All right, now no need to do anything else, just simply click on OK and we're done applying the sulfate to our structure. All right, so that's done. We're done with the boundary condition, we're done with the loading, we're done with the geometry, meshing, all stuff. Next important part is to create the analysis case. So we go to the analysis tab now and click on general to create different analysis cases. Now, this is important to understand. We can actually create one model and we can apply as many analysis, different types of analysis as possible. So let's say we want one dry state. All right. So here we go. We have the linear analysis, uh, non-linear construction state, all types of analysis are available. However, we are going to be performing the slope stability analysis using the SRM method. So we select that and further we are going to go for the analysis control options wherein we can go to the advanced non-linear parameters and in case of uh, SRM method, we can make use of this arc length method. Now, you, you have actually a standard type of uh, method to perform the uh, SRM and that's like slope stability analysis with the help of SRM method. However, we do have the option to use the arc length method. So we will be just checking on the use arc 
and further we can provide the arc adjustment ratio as for there is a lot of theory behind all this information that we are I mean all these tools that we are looking at you can easily access the information of these nonlinear solver parameters in the online help manual or the analysis manuals available in the installation file of Midas GTS NX. So no need to get confused. All right, and we'll click on OK. Now, when we create an analysis case, we have the option to actually select few uh, of the soil layers or all of the soil layers, uh, one or two of the boundary conditions or one or two types of loops. So right now we are going to be using all the mesh sets, all the boundary sets and all the loading sets. So for that we'll just simply click on this arrow. We already have over here the mesh sets, the boundary and the self fit is also on that on the active side. Alright, so active dialog box is where you are using these all sets to perform the analysis. So for the dry state I'm not using any water level and I click on apply. Now to use the water level I am going to make this rainy day or rainy state as the analysis name everything will be same except in the analysis control I'll be using a water level we'll give it a uh, initial parameter of 1 and use the changing water level information by using this water level function and then click on OK and OK so we are done with defining two different analysis cases. One analysis case which was a dry condition without any water level and the second analysis case which we can actually see in this work stream menu is the rainy state with the water level function. Alright, so we can actually look at this water level. Anyway, so we are done over here with the analysis cases. Now we can simply go ahead and perform the analysis. So here again we have the option to perform one analysis or maybe both the analysis at the same time. So I'm going to be using both and just click on OK. Right. So I'll save this as slope stability 3 and click on save and the program will start performing the analysis. So in the analysis the program is like basically going to reduce the shear strength of the slopes and uh, it is going to find out the factor of safety for each iteration and that's what we're going to be seeing in this output dialog box right over here. So for such a uh, model it is going to take a little bit of time to perform the analysis. That's why I'll take you directly to the slope stability 2 wherein I have performed the analysis for the dry period. Alright, so in the dry period we can see over here uh, there are almost 13 in increments done to find out what is the critical factor of safety. So the most critical factor of safety is 1.57. So if our factor of safety limit is 1.5 then we are good over here in the dry state. However, in the rainy state the results are different. And uh, when it comes to SRM, let's look at the different results that we can get. Alright, the first uh, important result is the factor of safety which we have already seen. Now in this itself we are going to expand and we will look at the rest of the results. So to find out what is the uh, location of the failure, we can uh, go ahead for the solid strains and look at the maximum shear strain all right so this is actually going to show us the failure surface so it's almost going in this direction and uh, this is like in the solid format so we can actually cut this solid by using this clipping plane and find out the failure surface in between so we can actually look at the different failure surface at different locations in the x direction, similarly in the y direction, not for the y but in the x direction specifically. And we can actually make uh, different clipping planes over here, define the different planes over here. And there is another plane that I can create let's say on this side right and we can actually display the mesh shape and no need for the edges 
and uh, no need for the uh, cap other areas so display capped part itself so here we go this is these are the two locations that we have chosen to check the failure surface okay so this is how SRM method can be very accurate and also along with the solid strains we can find out what are the displacements so we can look at the TZ translational displacement I'll uncheck this and uh, deformation let's get it deformed all right so this is a deformed shape let's look at the deformed plus undeformed wire so this is uh, the undeformed shape that we can see as well as the deformed shape on our of our structure all right so different total translation also we can check and also we can look at uh, different results with the help of probe information like uh, we can simply click on any of the node at which we want to look uh, I mean for which we want to see the result like the TZ result which is 0 0.3487 at this node and we can look at this as well it's 740 maximum is 0 0.5652 so if you would like to look at the maximum location you can just click over here at max and it will give you the location where the maximum displacement is taking place all right so this is these are like very, uh, one few of the various results that you can get in uh, Midas GTS NX all right uh, you can also uh, make image files like you can save these as image files and generate different outputs so there are different tools as well like can export to 3d PDF wherein the program is capable of creating a PDF that allows you to rotate your structure and take a look at each and every side of your project so when it comes to an output Midas GTS NX is actually very very useful and uh, very informative and interactive as well all right, so that is it about our demonstration. Let's get back to our presentation. We'll get to our concluding part of uh, today's session. Basically, in the conclusions, we are going to look at the benefits in GTS NX. So there is auto reflection of water level. That means water levels like 3D water level can be considered in all types of analysis we saw for the slope analysis as well it can be included in for seepage force uh, according to the height of water level then in terms of load assignments GTS NX can simulate various in situ loading conditions and we can define the general load conditions such as self weight forces pressures temperature loads etc and there is also dynamic function database which includes a variety of code based uh, response spectra and time history functions additionally uh, there is customization functions for vibration blast and seismic loading that can also be generated in gts nx moving on to the boundary conditions in gts nx various boundary conditions for all analysis types are provided Essential boundary conditions such as constraint for ground in static analysis and damper or transmitting boundary for dynamic analysis can be defined automatically in the program. A huge time is saved over here. By defining water level surface, the pore pressure can be automatically considered in stress analysis and further time dependent water levels can be defined to simulate a rapid drawdown as well as a gradual rise in water level due to rainfall. Then there is a change in property function that can be used to accurately simulate the change in material properties over time during construction sequence. That means we have construction stage analysis. And these functions are actually used for simulating the hardening of the concrete as well as excavation projects in which soil layers are replaced by the structural elements. Lastly, the most powerful feature of GTS NX is that it can incorporate hybrid mesh generation function which creates mesh sets using an optimal combination of hexahedron and tetrahedron uh, uh, tetrahedral elements. So the hexahedral elements which as we know produce re reliable results are generated even in the complex models. 
So this kind of hybrid mesh is formed by generating hexahedral elements outwards and tetrahedral elements are inwards. And uh, pyramidal ones are as translational elements. The main advantage of actually using these hexahedron elements is that they provide comparatively more accurate stress results and, uh, and, uh, the, than the tetrahedral elements only. And the advantage of using the tetrahedral element is that they are more effective for modeling short curves and corners of complex geometries. So that's about the meshing. And GTSNX actually um, can make use of tetrahedral and hexahedron elements without any significant loss in modeling or analysis speed. So that's these are the main benefits of Midas GTSNX along with all the others that we have seen in the in the uh, demonstration. Now let's move ahead to the last part that is the question answer session. So if you have uh, any question on questions then please uh, let me know you can write at the chat box or the questions box in front of you Basically, today's session is going to be, uh, is, it is recorded, so it is going to be distributed uh, to our attendees. And uh, further, you can uh, again take a re really good look into the demonstration since I went too fast. So you can take a really good look into it. And uh, in case you would like to make your own projects into GTSNX, you can actually simulate it in the similar way or in any different way uh, because we have got this terrain geometry maker as well. So uh, in, it depends on what information that you have with you and uh, accordingly you can make use of GTSNX for um, performing the slope stability analysis. There are many other analysis that can be performed in GTSNX like I had mentioned early in the presentation like we can do dynamic analysis, consolidation analysis, seepage slope coupled analysis. So uh, it's totally uh, depending on whatever project you're doing, how big your project is, simply download minus GTSNX and uh, then you can go ahead with the design. All right, so here's one question. Can we? Can you please tell how applied how you applied the boundary conditions? Okay, the boundary conditions was uh, very easily applied using the automatic feature. So in GTSNX, let me get back. All right. In GTSNX, we have this constraint option. I'll go to the pre-processing mode for that. So there is constraint option, which is there for, the for applying the support. And in that, we have this auto constraint function. So with the help of this auto constraint function, the program considered all the mesh sets and then performed the analysis. And then further, uh, uh, the program has applied the support. So that's basically how we apply. We go to the constraint, go to the auto, and then we simply click on OK, and that boundary is uh, applied to the entire mesh. If you would like to display the boundaries, then you can go to the analysis tab, go to the boundary condition, and check on this option. So this is how the boundary has been applied. So if I go closely over here, so we can see that the x, y, z is constrained at the bottom. Then uh, depending on the side, the x and y is constrained on the sides. So this can actually simulate the continuity of your model.
All right, I guess there are no more questions. We'll go ahead then and uh, end our webinar session today. If in case you do have any questions then you can, or you have any queries, then you can go on to globalsupport.myrasuser.com. You can write your questions. Also, you can give us feedback of this webinar session and uh, uh, also help us uh, know what all topics you would like to uh, check out when it comes to a geotechnical software solution. So that's um, globalsupport.mydesuser.com for any queries. Thank you very much for attending the webinar session. Have a great day.